Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Good to see you. I feel bright today. I feel bright. I hope it shows. I hope you're feeling it. Let me get myself squared here. My hair is crazy, but I feel bright. I can I can cut that right off. No problem. Oh, Tivave. We are in such a zone right now. I, I am in such a zone right now. I'm going to take you with me. This has been a crazy Teveve time for me, but we're going to come to that in just a minute. I want to see who's here and say good morning to everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. You made it. Have you seen TJ Maxx has been selling these cool, like, scarf things that you can just put your glasses on the end of? There's no excuse. And I thought, you know, good for the show, but also, and they come in all different colors and stuff. You could probably make them easily, right? But the prestige is this thing here, right? That's super handy. I thought very good for flea market season, cruising through the aisles, searching for stuff, right? Oh, good to see everybody. Lots of people logged on this morning. Let me see. Let me see who's here. Joan, good to see you. I'm going to be I'm going to announce it now. I'm going to be listing for Joan on Monday because Joan is not a Facebook person. She literally just bought the most recent Bliss, and it's the beautiful kind of marble-looking uh, bronzy black one. You know the one I mean? It's got like texture. It looks very art deco with like all of the heads. So I'm going to be listing that for her on Monday um, on uh, Madcap Monday in our Facebook group, which is Rug Cooking and Punch Needle Club. If you're looking for a Bliss Cutter and you want a brand new one with all of the heads and all of the options, um, send me a message in the meantime. So Gayla, good to see you. We've been going back and forth a little bit this morning. Lots of excitement. Oh no, is it raining? Oh no, I feel so um, selfish hoarding all of this beautiful sunlight out there. I need it though. I was in such a bad mood on Monday. I don't know if you could tell, but I was in such a bad mood. We still got through it and had a lot of inspiration and even better today. So Robin, good to see you in Wisconsin checking in. Yes, I still am planning my trip to Wisconsin. I'm trying to figure out how my um, year is going to lay out because I am starting another book project right away. So I just want to probably on Friday or something, I'll be able to give word about the subject and what I'll start looking for because I want us to work together even more with this book than the last book. It's going to be a really big deal for me because the last one was more of a making book and I was very excited and happy to do that. But this is more of like, I've been waiting all my life kind of a book and I'm going to need a lot of help for it. A lot of inspiration from buddies. Uh, Becky, good to see you. Oh, I love the tulips. A rainy morning there too. Oh no, but two beautiful tulips coming up. Beverly, good morning. Don't forget about the thumbs up. Thank you. I always forget to say um, thumbs up, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. If you support me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. The link is in the video. Really appreciate it. Makes it possible for me to take time out of the day um, to buy supplies, buy books, review things, talk about things, show things, all of that. Thank you. Um, I have so much. I, mean, I have so many announcements to make, but we'll just probably skip most of them and and just do content today because I'm I'm too merry to do announcements today. Linda, good to see you. Good vibes in New Jersey for our five eleven friends. That is true. We are all five eleven friends. Cheryl, good to see you. Good morning, and Crystal. Oh, is Vera back in school or is she still sick today? And um, Crystal, I have an episode of you coming up. Don't think that I forgot about that punch needle business. Mom, you made it. Good morning. I haven't seen you live for a while. Good morning. It's been busy. I know. Glad to be with you too, Mama. We're looking forward to a nice Easter this weekend. I wonder if you're doing something exciting and fun. I have a pattern that I have transferred and ready to go. I have all my um, wool and fabrics laid out. It's the, it's the Patreon pattern of this month with a very traditional pattern of a basket. Very untraditional possibilities with the rabbit coming out of it. Could be a chocolate rabbit. Could be a Fluffy rabbit could be anything. Could be a proddy rabbit, proddy ears. I didn't even think of that. Um, could be anything, but it's a beautiful design. So uh, you've got, if you're a Patreon member, you've already gotten that. And that's one I'm going to be working on this week. As soon as I get a free minute again, that's the next thing that I'm going to do. I can't wait to just sit and hook for a while. Doreen, good to see you in sunny upstate New York. Doreen, let me know what's going on up there with like finger leg stuff and festivals and fiber stuff. I, I just do not have time to stay on top of all this stuff. So if anybody hears in advance of things that happen in your area like fiber festivals, let me know. Because if it's possible at all to come with either with a stall or just for fun, I will. Sometimes I don't have the mojo, um, the wherewithal to think about packing stuff up. But this year I probably could. I, I have a lot of stuff that I've been sitting on for a while because I've been too busy to kind of put it out there. So 
keep me updated on all your festivals. I know a lot happens in the fall, and um, I, I'd like to get busy with traveling and stuff, too. Heidi, great to see you. Good to see you. Oh, thanks, Mom. You know, I sprayed, I'm in between color, and I sprayed it with that spray stuff, you know, from like the pharmacy. It just sprays like a stripe of dark, and it also adds a lot of body and texture. That's what really gets me. I feel like I'm wearing a wig, which would be fine if I were, but it's just that I'm not. So it feels weird that um, it feels like a wig and looks like a wig. <laughs> if it feels like a wig, it looks like a wig, but this time it's not. Oh dear, April, good to see you. Storyteller, well, great to see you. Hello in Colorado. Colleen is, no, who, Storyteller, what? I should know from the page. I'm so awful, I'm so sorry. Great to see you. I'm glad you're there. Crystal says, the shirt scarf coordination is A++. Thank you. Thank you for noticing. I didn't realize how low the shirt was. Um, but yeah, it's nice that TJ Maxx gives so many options. It's like, you know, I suppose you could easily do this, right? You just need a little bit of hardware, which they sell at the craft store. Get like a regular little scarf like this. They even used to sell in the 80s these very thin scarves. It's, that's as thick as it is. Or a necktie. Or a necktie. Beautiful silk neckties, right? And then they've just kind of tied it at the bottom and put a, a little, you know, acrylic chain on there with the, the plastic thing that holds the glasses. I mean, a lot of us wear glasses, and I think that this is a handy thing, but I think it makes the outfit for sure. It works in place of jewelry today. I forgot to put my Easter earrings on. I was still going to put my Easter earrings on. I don't have that many more days to wear them. Oh, I'm so angry. The carrot and the bunny, you know. Oh, man. Um, Cindy, good to see you in Colorado. Thank you, Doreen. Hello, Heather in Kansas City. Great to see Rebecca. I am so sorry. Rebecca, what is wrong with me? I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm, I'm on it now. I'm on it. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cats Gallery, South Carolina, on vacation. On vacation. Do you like making Tavaves? Because that's where we're going right now. Vacation mode. You know, we've been in the Cook Islands since Monday, in our heads anyway. I know some, some of us more than others. Susan, <laughs> you have been as bad as I have been. Um, it's, it's hard to break free from this. We're going to be looking at Tavave today. Um, Tavave, if you tuned in on Monday, is a form of quilt making that lends itself very nicely also to rug making, um, similar to Hawaiian quilting, a little bit different, right? And we talked on Monday about what the differences are um, with Hawaiian quilts. You often see a mirror image design like this, right? And you open it, it's the same both ways, my cue sheet. Um, but with Tavave, you more often see it in um, quarters, right? It's all quarter. And that's what sort of dictates the design, the same design on all parts. And definitely uh, imagery taken from the immediate surroundings, nature, leaves, leaves that are used for ceremonies, for medicine, for beauty, for perfume, for everything. Um, a lot of headdresses made of leaves, a very lush, um, um, uh, what's the word, not topography, for landscape, right? Plants, lush green flowering, everything, right? So we're going to go back to the geography of this and look at the book that I, I haven't really even opened yet because we were looking at the Tapapa website, uh, the art museum in New Zealand on Monday. But today I'm going to talk about this book and look at this book a little bit with you because this is there are two books on Tavave. Um, the other one is coming in the mail. It's an older one. I have a feeling this is the more definitive one. Uh, illustrated with photographs by John Daly, D-A-L-E-Y. Uh, and many of the photographs that are at the museum in uh, New Zealand that I used on Monday are also by John Daly, same photograph, same photographer. So he has put a lot of serious academic and creative work into working with the author of this book, who is Lindsay uh, Ron Gokia, and the people at the museum in New Zealand, the Tapapa, um, really documenting and nailing down the history of this form. So we're going to talk more about the history of it in just a minute and look at some examples of it. But today, Anita, great to see you. Um, it's been a while. I'm happy you're there. Um, today, we're going to look at some of the examples I had from before. We'll probably start with the book. Um, I wanted to carry on looking at some examples that we didn't get to on Monday, but also look at two different sort of branches of Teveve that we haven't looked at or talked about yet. One of them are, are, are the Teveve that look like cross-stitch. You'll see what I mean. And the other are the Teveve that are two colored, right? Just one color on top of another, and those more resemble the Hawaiian applique quilts. But I put out, um, I think, six Teveve designs that I did yesterday, and they are on the Ribbon Candy Hooking site now. Let's look at those now. 
I did look, before I forget, let's look at those now. That was a lot of energy. This is our first image for when we start again. Let me put this image down for a minute. This is one we ended off with. So as we do, we will start with that one shortly. But let's come up here for a minute. I was working on this because it meant a lot to me to get some um, Teveves going. I have every intention of, Rebecca, I might need help with this because I am nowhere near as good as you. At, Rebecca is certified in punching, so that explains it. But I am not a great puncher historically. I don't have the stamina. I make a lot of mistakes. I don't like the other side, which is the right side. I want to do at least one of these Teveves as a punch needle project for myself room size. So I loved this one. I did different things with colors, whereas I could have gone easily with, um, you know, the same combination of colors in all four corners of the composition. Um, and I left the background basically two colors so that it was um, stable enough to introduce extra colors. I could have done different colors in all four corners, and maybe in the end I would. So, oh, Cindy, good to see you. Cindy says, everywhere I look, there seems to be rug inspiration there these days. That's the mindset to be in, and you hope that that lasts forever, right? I do. I'm in that mindset, too, and sometimes it comes and goes. I'm hoping it lasts for a while this time. This is a darker one I did, and this one I think is a bit more practical for, like, you know, more formal rooms, like in front of the fireplace. I really like this design, though, with the dark, dark, dark gray background going, the leaves going, like, brassy, kind of antique gold to, like, a dark lime green. And then the in-between colors. You know I love the in-between color palette. I could play with it some more, but I really, I like the way that it's nailed down there. Those are two of them. I think I did six of them so far. This is kind of like a fun free time thing. This is um, more reminiscent of like water lilies, a bit more structured, but I put that paprika border on it that I really liked. This could easily be done, uh, cropped off a bit as a shaped rug, which would also be very cool. Uh, but it does have sort of a summer feel with the paprika. It really reminds me of my parents' living room in the 1980s. This was the exact color paint they had on the wall, and I have always admired this color. I've tried to repeat it, but I can't get it quite right on my own walls. I might get it right on the floor, but I'm loving, I'm loving all of these. It's going to be hard for me to decide which one to do. If I could get a bit faster with punch, I could, I could do several. Uh, this is like a poppy design, but I did it in more 1920s colors. It could easily go to a tomato red for the poppy color. But again, I like the in-between colors myself. I'm second guessing it now because it would look beautiful as a field of poppies, kind of tulips in between breaking this up. Me too, Heidi. It's a total rabbit hole. It's a terrible rabbit hole. It's so fun and easy to design in this style. It's something that you should try if you're interested. Um, and I had a couple more, but I guess I haven't gotten them up yet because I was so busy this morning and last night we had a play date yesterday. Teddy finally found a friend. He found a friend. It's so great. Somebody from his school who he wasn't, was not autistic or in his class, but I made a date with his mother and she's not one of the Stepford wives. She's so cool and she's so nice and she's in her 40s and I'm 50, so I'm always going to be older than the other moms, but at least she's not like annoying and persnickety and boring. She's super cool. And her son, um, Cohen, is super cool, too, so I'm excited. We had a good day. It took out, It was worth spending some time out from work yesterday, getting that friendship going. The liquid flowers, Crystal. Yeah, me too. Crystal, this would be great for you, this Tavave idea. You know, because you often work very symmetrical, and you are very shapey. It would work great for you. Less busy with your style, but I could definitely see you digging into this. Yeah, me, I know. Robin, when I was working on these, I was thinking about your Abenaki rug and how I never did an Abenaki rug, and I've yet to do that. But I think I am going to do a big full-size rug. Um, I'm, I'm excited to try at least. I know, right, Linda? I'm so happy. Such good news. He's such a nice boy. They were off talking the whole time, and he looks like Teddy, too. He's a little bit smaller than Teddy, although he may be older. Teddy's very tall. Um, but, you know, he looks like Teddy. He's not like... Um, he does, he's not a mean kid. You know, he doesn't have the look of a mean kid. Thank you, God. So let's start looking at, get ready for the costume change. Let's start looking at this Tavave book. Uh, it is just over the top. I highly recommend, I don't think I put a link to it, but it is on Amazon. Um, t the Art of Tavave. Uh, again, this is by Lindsay Rongakea and John Daly. Photographs by John Daly. Traditional Cook Islands Quilting. So, this book came out in, let's see, um, 2001. So it's been out for a while. I didn't realize it was, I didn't realize it was that old. Oh my God. 
but you know what I mean? I hadn't encountered it, even in my, you know, when I was much more of a quilter and I belonged to a couple of guilds, I still didn't encounter this. So for me, this is a new world. So I cannot express how beautiful this book is. I am not a tropical island person. I am not a beach person. I don't even enjoy the beach unless it's evening or winter. But when I see this book with all of its colors, with this valley high feel to it, it really gets me going. It's very, it's still not a beach person, but I love the colors. I love the energy. I love the brightness. I love the cheerful quality of every image in this book. It's it's all color, it's constant, coming at you, pops of color and great ideas. Highly recommend. So I'll read you a little bit of the introduction so we can get our feet wet a little bit and then we'll start looking at images pretty quickly. For centuries, the women of the South Pacific have made a unique contribution to customary art forms, translating cultural themes and values into symbolic visual interpretations of the world around them and their own proud place within it. So yeah, all of the leaves and flowers that surround them that all have meaning that all have life that all have a place in in their world all of these things are depicted in these teveve and that is so cool you know we see this um, when we looked at like sort of mission groups like the women of guatemala that were making rugs with t-shirts um, and the women in mexico making rugs we covered like those sort of communities of rug hookers abroad um, this is very different. This is quilters. We're still in our comfortable textile niche. Um, but I feel like this group of artists and um, these glasses are totally out of focus. It's throwing me for a loop. Are, are much more about depicting what is immediately around them. So inspiration is coming from what they are seeing, like in their house, outside of their house. And that's a little bit different than we see other designers uh, you know, in, a, in which way they're working. So um, for that reason, I look closely at these Teveve because I'm looking at the kinds of flowers they have. They're very foreign to me and the kinds of leaves and the shapes and it's all very foreign and different and thus exciting. So this is a big part of um, the making is that the inspiration is coming from out the window or in front of you. Nowhere is this more true than among the women, I'm reading again, of the Cook Islands. This group of 15 islands lies in the South Pacific Ocean, virtually in the center of the Polynesian Triangle. That sounds like a cocktail, doesn't it? South of Hawaii, flanked to the west by Tonga and Samoa, and to the east by French Polynesia, and to the south by New Zealand. The Cook Islands are made up of the southern and northern groups. Get this, with a total land area of 240 square kilometers spread over 2 million square kilometers of ocean. I mean that, think about the scale, the scattering, right? It's like Hansel and Gretel breadcrumbs, whoosh, everyone an island. So, so exciting. And Susan, if you're on, Susan wrote in our Facebook group that she'd been to the Cook Islands recently. It seems so far away, doesn't it? I would love to go to these places, but I have to admit, despite the fact that I was a tour guide for my career until, you know, I had the kids, I am super afraid of flying. So anything that involves flying, I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. And then I'm thinking about it the whole time I'm on vacation because I know I got to come home again. So it just seems so far, but so beautiful for those of you who are more adventurous than I am. The last hundred years have witnessed exciting developments in the forms and styles of artistic expression of the women of the Cook Islands, particularly in needlework and especially in Teveve. There is no written record of how or when the sewing of Teveve was introduced to the Cook Islands. Some say the wives of the London Missionary Society missionaries who arrived here in 1821 might have taught it, Others hold that it was learned from the Tahitian missionaries who helped introduce Christianity to the Cook Islands. In 1895, for instance, three Catholic nuns, one Irish, two French, came to Rarotonga from Tahiti and taught quilting, embroidery, needlepoint, sewing, crochet, and tatting at a local Catholic school. Whatever its origin, Teveve slipped easily and permanently into the daily and ceremonial lives of Cook Island society. Both the patterns that have developed and the methods by which Teveve are put together are distinctly Cook Islands. More on the how in a minute. Teveve patterns are inspired by and reflect the environment of the Cook Islands. Flowers, plants play such an important part 
of the Cook Islands lifestyle, customs, and form the basis of virtually all Tebebe designs. In addition, they are used in traditional medicines, as decorations for ceremonies and functions, and as adornments for dance costumes. They are given the spirit of love, friend, given in the spirit of love, friendship, and family. Um, and for that reason, they are rarely, if ever, sold. So you probably, I have not searched to see if there are any for sale and if there are good for them. It's good to boost your economy with something you do well. Um, but it explains in a minute why they typically do not sell these things and why are they, they are so extra special as gifts. Most women know how to cut and sew to Veve, but only a few women are expert in the art of designing. I'm going to make a shameless plug right here. So I just announced yesterday the Designing Light class for, um, or the day before, for, I just put it on the website yesterday, this month, Designing Like the Great American Quilt. But it's it's just the quilt in general. I just had to come up with a nice title. So Tevevi is going to be one of the things we look at in that class. How to fold, how to use, and of course, like with all the Design Light classes, it comes with a bunch of my sketches that are yours to use in any way that you want. Um, to be able to execute a bunch of different quilt designs that will translate perfectly into rug designs. And one of them, of course, will be Tevebe after all of this conversation. One of them, of course, will. We'll also look at Hawaiian applique, um, traditional applique, the art quilt, and of course, patchwork, right? Just patchwork. So interesting that um, just about any woman that you could grab by the shoulders and say, do you know how to make a Tevebe would say yes but very few feel that they are competent enough to design. Such women, have the ones who do design, have attained the status of a tonga, which is a person who is highly skilled in any art. That would be the toppermost, poppermost. The women may not always be able to say where a particular idea for a pattern has come from, but many find inspiration in their own vision uh, of their environment, drawing an inspiration of what they see directly onto the fabric or, this is their transfer method being explained, or onto paper, lino, or like linoleum, or large plastic sheeting before transferring it onto the fabric. So that's the answer to that, the transfer part of it. A number of women who sew to Veve are superstitious and they won't use designs of, for example, a peacock or a mermaid or other marine life as it may bring bad luck. Others believe that they would lose their ability to design and sew if they were to sell their Tevebe. So superstition is what is often keeping them from making um, more money, um, you know, in the world, abroad, away from the islands, by doing a skill that they're very, very good at. But it's just the way it is, isn't it? It's like um, superstition is a strong part of the culture. Uh, and I can identify with that because it's a strong part of my world too. Uh, many women are also not interested in selling. I can relate to this one too because they feel number one attached to it and number two, they feel that if they lose it, they won't be able to recreate it. Have you had that feeling? Because that is, that is like at the core of my being. I love it so much if I sell it or if I get rid of it, unless I give it to a close friend or family member, will I ever be able to see it again? Will I ever be able to do it again? And my guess is probably not. So this is a big part of the reason why they are not uh, widely available. The beautifully crafted Tevebe are an integral part of special occasions on the islands at baptisms, the birth of a child, wedding, funerals, hair cutting ceremonies. All of these occasions are perfect occasions to give a Tevebe. They're very sought after wedding gifts, presentation gifts, um, which the bride traditionally presents gifts to her husband. So Tevebe might be one of those. Um, it goes into the usage at funerals. Tevebe are used to cover the bed if the body is brought home prior to the funeral, a woven mat or a tevebe sometimes lines the grave or casket, or the tevebe may be draped over the casket and buried with the family member. So lots of different uses culturally, ceremonially, uh, for these quilts, the tevebe. Um, and I'm going to start showing you some pictures, but I just have to tell you, this book, every, every page has tons. Um, and then the second part of the book goes into the different people who make the Tevebe, beautiful photos of these women. They are gorgeous women. They all have the same kind of look. They're all from the same place, um, but they're all just glowing. They're just beautiful people. And Tevebe that that person has made. So whereas this part of the book is the history part that I was just looking at, 
this, it's not even halfway through the book. It's the whole rest of the book goes artist by artist and shows you uh, the, most, well, the most beautiful photography of the islands, but um, also the work that these women have done. And very unique signature stamp, uh, not actual signature, but the, from woman to woman, um, their designs are very consistent with themselves and no one else. So very unique work that they're doing, really beautiful, different color, aesthetics. I mean, it's just an unbelievable book. It was, it was a mind-blowing book for me. <coughs> so let's start looking at some of our stuff here. Debbie, you're with me on the flying. Isn't that awful? It's just, I've had some awful flying experiences where the, the plane is going like this, but also like this, and, uh, and dropping. And I mean, everybody who flies, they know this and they know it's okay. And you look around and people are just dozing and, you know, totally unconcerned and I'm like having a medical emergency it's just it's yeah it's not for everybody is it oh now that I have kids everything seems so scary to me I don't want to leave them early you know so let's see where we were we left off on I did this to our paper um, we left off on an image that I want to just recap the image that we were looking at because I included it in this episode by having it on the screen by accident so here we go so again many of these photographs including this one are by John Daly uh, who was the photographer on the book that we are looking at today. So this piece is by Teparu Opo, O-P-O, circa 1992. This is a tiger lily pattern. This is the one that we left off with. So let's move on. Beauty, ultimate beauty. And I think we said this one is very Macintosh in its structure because um, it's very angular, isn't it? The, the flowers are standing up very, very straight. There's a lot... Imagine this hooked, right? If you if you hook and don't do a different kind of rug form or even latched, but hooked, imagine the directional flow that you could get with this. I mean, it would be exquisite directional hooking. All you have to do is hook the leaves and the petal in the same direction and you have automatically got directional hooking. It would just be exquisite. As with many of these, they lend themselves very easily and naturally to directional hooking. Here is another beauty. Um, I don't know if we saw this one last time. This is an unknown artist. I might have flipped through this one quickly because this is an unknown artist. Let me see. I hope I'm doing these in the right order. Um, yeah, I think I am. So if these look familiar, let me know because I don't want to repeat what... No, I am repeating what we did before. So um, let's just click through them just in case. This was an unknown artist. It's You know, they are fairly similar. Uh, this is circa 1940, rayon. That sounds familiar, but we've had two that fit the bill uh, with the rayons. So let me see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. There we go. Um, gosh. Again, I, I can't remember if we looked at this one. I was in such a bad uh, mind frame. This one has a woodcut look to me, and I think that's because of the handling of the little branches, right, of, in, the, in the darkness behind the, the four clusters, the, floor, the four clusters of three. Absolutely beautiful. And another exciting color scheme, just the three colors, unknown artist. This one is really a cool one um, by uh, pa Parau Tarawia. These are hard names because I don't know what the language sounds like. Um, for cadence, so it's hard to guess at the pronunciation, so I'm sorry if I'm brutalizing this. This is a uh, uh, Cattleya orchid pattern. Really beautiful kaleidoscope feel to it with that one stem, north, south, east, and west, um, pinwheeling, right? So if you're a quilter, it's doing a pinwheel in the center, isn't it? And because it's broken up by the pinwheel composition into the four corners, you're able to drop um, huge flowers into those places and and that really is the story of the piece and they have done the thing where they've done diagonals color colors matched on diagonal corners but not all four the same way around if you end up doing a piece like this you think about your color planning because it is endless and infinite options um, you can go much more the same this one is much more sort of um, um, more matchy matchy not in a bad way but the colors are more controlled and more consistently placed. So again, a very limited color palette. This is a photograph by John Daly. Another rug um, from 1992 by Poco Copy. And again, I'm just flying through these a little bit so we can look at some new ones because this is the thumbnail I used last time. So I feel like we definitely saw this one. 
Um, same thing by po uh, Poco Copy and pho Photograph by John Daly. Beautiful thumbnail, but I know we saw that guy. So this is this is really something. This is so different, and this comes back to this um, simple is hard. Designing something simple is hard. This is so perfect. It is so simple, but it is so perfect. This is one that really leans on um, the the feeling, the belief, the hope that having a lot of the background color showing is a good thing. For me, it is a good thing because this is a very in-between orangey brown color in the background. That's my favorite, those in-between colors that don't slap your face. Um, I just love looking at the background and it's a perfect complement for the blue and the yellow. And then of course that kind of evergreen in the, they're only using the one green, right? A lot of the color is happening in the embroidered centers. This is another photograph by John Daly. This, this pattern is called Water Lily and it's by Tungane or Tangani Cameron. Um, absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorites and it's one of the most simple. You see how even on the corners, they've got those sort of finger tulips, the two yellow, two blue at diagonals. Really bringing your, bringing your eye, even though it's a very square composition, it's bringing your eye in a circle because of the movement of just those little flowers on the corners. It is a smart composition. Everything is working here. And it just becomes a question of, do you like the colors, right? And if you are going to do a Teveve, if you are going to design your own or make one of someone else's, you can certainly switch the colors out. Just make sure that you have colors that you really love. Now, this is a classic. Another photograph by uh, John Daly, and this one is by Tokoro uh, Monroe. And beautiful white background, as they often are. If we're making rugs for the floor, we want to think about that white background, possibly an off-white background, right, just to be a bit practical. But um, unbelievable uh, consistency of color here, just great color choices. And one of the things they talked about in the book that I didn't go into with you yet was the fact that some of the women who make the Teveve are very literal in their color placement. And they feel that an iris should be, a certain kind of an iris should be the exact color and that's the way that it is. And we get this in rug hooking too, as, as we say all the time, you get uh, people who just feel that way. You get the old guard who is Im immovable on that subject. And then you get people who come to it and say, well, you know, I know that that orchid is supposed to be purple, but it's going to be orange and you're going to have to live with it. So there is a bit of a divide from what I've read in the book about the way people feel about designing and um, the way people feel about other people's finished projects when they are um, not literal enough. So for us, that comes up in rug hooking too. And, you know, we combat that by saying, mind your own business, live your own life. I do what I do, you do what you do. Um, but in this case, this is color-wise, deviating from that subject, color-wise, keeping it real, right? Keeping it, these are like rose colors for sure. Absolutely beautiful composition, reminds me of a paper cut because it's the four, right? The, the paper has been folded twice to make it quartered and then the same exact design in all four quarters. There's even a break, like a cross in between which reminds me a little bit of looking down like from a God forbid airplane onto a formal garden outside a castle, Elizabethan style garden, something very um, structured, right? Really beautiful configuration. A big part of the story here are the leaves. And that does give me the feeling of looking down on something. It has a bit of a labyrinth feel for me too. Your eye is looking at the darks versus the lights, the ins versus the outs. And then those big fat clusters of colorful, happy looking flowers just plunked down. But they're plunked down, right? They're different sizes, they're in slightly different positions, but they're plunked down in the same place for all four parts. And that gives it symmetry, it gives it stability, it lets you really play with color. And if we were looking at this piece close up, which is massive, you would see there is a ton of color embroidery on all of these flowers. That one is an absolute beauty. I mean, they all are. They, they, look at another beauty. So this is a beauty, but look at the way that this composition has been done. Another photograph by John Daly, circa 1992, at least the photograph, by Grace uh, Nagaputa. And this one is called Rose Buds. So, so beautiful. The placement of a light um, a couple of buds in the center of each flower really creates the kind of sameness, um, the kind of synchronicity that is helping this pattern be able to support quite a lot of colors, right? Even within 
flowers, you've got different shades of the same color. Really beautiful. Very, very, very dark evergreen structure behind, almost like ironwork, right? Almost like, remember last week we were talking about designing from a door, like the old door, the ironwork. This almost has that very structured feeling for me. All of these flowers look to me to be almost, almost exactly the same shape, right? Diff mirrored placement and all of that, but some of them, the dark ones in the center are not done with multiple colors, neither are the yellows. So the center and then going out toward the corners are very stable, but some of the other flowers have two colors in each flower. I think that's exciting, really adds interest besides the embroidery. Now with this piece, you can see that it is different from top to bottom. So although this is a quarter design, they did not use that uh, bar of the dark green, that curve around the edge in the middle for whatever reason, right? It, that differs. So it doesn't make it a perfect sort of uh, symmetrical uh, pairing of four. It makes it a half and halfer, if you see what I mean. If you were to fold it in half, you'd get the mirror image. But if you were folded into quarters, you wouldn't. There is a break in that bar, right? So that when you're designing and you're folding your paper, you'll know what I mean. When you don't carry the bar right to both sides of your fold, you would get the uh, all the way around border if you did, but when you don't, you get a break in the border. And that creates something that looks, looks like it's split in half rather than into fours. But this is a very strong series of four, beautifully color planned, really gorgeous. I love their colors. You know, they're not primary colors for the most part. Oh, you know what? Hang on. I think we are. Okay, so we are entering. Let's, we'll, we'll stick with it. We're entering the next phase of our conversation, which is style of Teveve that looks to me more like cross stitch. Now picture, do you have, I know you do, do you have any like vintage or old um, cross stitch or lace making or knitting catalogs from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, where they show you diagrams that are very square graph grid driven uh, with either color or black and white that give you the shape of something, right? Cross stitch magazines are, are perfect for this, but you also get it with knitting magazines, tatting magazines, all kinds of handcrafts. Um, anything with a needle, you get that kind of a grid and that kind of information. That's what these examples, these next examples look like. Heidi says, I have to think um, at dandelions too. They are so big. Dandelions are so beautiful. And as we've been seeing lately, I forget which episode, um, I think it was a cocktail night because somebody made that great point. Oh, it was the Rittermere night that the image we were looking at was a dandelion in its various stages of life, which is so symbolic and beautiful and perfect for this time of year. Heidi, that's a great idea. So these are a bit different because they're made differently. This is actually called chrysanthemums. This was made by Varera Mava, um, again, photographed by John Daly in 1992. That's when these photographs were taken. And this is also part of the museum collection. All of these ones I'm showing you here are part of the museum collection, the Te Papa, uh, the art museum in New Zealand. So we're going to move on from this, but I'm going to show you other examples that are quite like this, and you're going to detect a theme. So do you detect a theme? It also looks like, uh, in its high pixelation, uh, in perfect symmetry, it also looks like needlepoint canvases, doesn't it? so rich you can see there it is very it is pixelated there are not fluid lines here but it reminds you of something painted that you've seen like an informational charter graft for a craft or a needlepoint painted pattern right that's my stomach growling if you're wondering it sounds like there's a beast in here with me but it, there is a beast it's my it's my hunger so these are very very different than other ones we've seen wait till you see a little bit more um, this is this is one that is a much larger scale, but this really interesting design um, feature with this diagonal running through it, right? It almost looks like the crop of a fabric. Um, it's it's absolutely beautiful. But are you also getting that cross stitch feel? Very pixelated. This is this is very costumey looking to me too. It looks like a like a fabric swatch. Oops, I meant. Um, busy, busy. Now, this is done the same way, but this looks more like an American patchwork quilt, right? All these little pieces, like part hexi quilt, but you've got a lot of other shapes in there. 
this is made the same way as the other ones we were looking at, but this one is not made with all squares. This one has various shapes. It truly is a kaleidoscope. This is like brain-numbing brain uh, detail. Like it's, for me, incomprehensible, the amount of detail. This looks like a pattern. I'm sorry, that last one was by, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I'm moving a little bit too fast. This one was by uh, Mama Pare to ease. Rin, ring, ringi, ringieo, ringieo, uh, and it was made in the 1950s, right? So that's what we know about that one. And I'm sorry, this one, which I should have immediately cited, 1992, um, it says, uh, this Tevebe was collected by Richard Walters on behalf of the museum in 1993. It was originally manufactured on commission for the Cook Islands Ministry of Cultural Development to celebrate the opening of the Cultural Center, Center on Rarotonga in 1992. Interesting, because that's the year of all the John Daly uh, photography as well. I wonder if he did that at, the, at that same time because that event was driving people to that island. Interesting. So this piece is by Mrs. Mare, M-E-R-E, -E, uh, Tovaroa, attributed 1920 to 1930s Cook Islands. Um, it says that it was either made by Mama Perez's maternal grandmother or her mother, uh, Mare Terevaroa. So unknown, nay Stringer. So uh, English, English uh, maiden name. So this really looks like a pattern design, doesn't it? But it is actually a finished all fabric Tevebe in this style that is more pixelated. And I'm gonna show you how these are made. So you're gonna get ready for a headache because it is extraordinary. Um, here is another one, this one, unknown maker. And oh God, wait till you hear this. Unknown maker, uh, which we, ha we hardly ever get the unknowns unless they're older, but this was made around 2000. This Teveve was purchased, are you sitting down, at a car boot sale in uh, Gisborne or Gisborne in 2000 and donated to the Tapapa Museum. So somebody found this at a car boot sale, right, which is like a flea market out of, you know, somebody brings their car and takes everything out of the trunk and puts it on a blanket on the ground and this was there. So, um, wow, that would be, that would be worth taking a plane ride for it, to think that you might find a Teveve at a car boot sale. My word, uh, so beautiful, so complicated as life can be. Speaking of beautiful and complicated, Mrs. Uh, Tuena Cora, Tara Ara, circa 1960s, Cook Islands. You see all those dit dots? Those are each squares of fabric. The measurements are not present for these. So this is something that you'd have to go on the museum website and inquire if you were interested, or the books will say, I'm not sure if this image is in the book off the top of my head, um, but extraordinary, right? Absolutely extraordinary, epic piece of work. And another one with um, slightly larger sort of pixelated square pieces, creating another design that looks to me like it is straight from a 1930s, the way that they color printed, like litho printed their color for cross stitch patterns. It is so beautiful. Flowers and the suggestion for me, at least I think I see a butterfly. So unknown maker, 1940s, um, they're referring to it as a butterfly and hibiscus pattern was made on Rarotonga, again in the 1940s. Um, so not a lot known on some of these. A lot of these have been donated to the art museum and they are safe there for all of time and for the whole world to be able to access on the Tapapa website, T-E-P-A-P-A, -P -A, New Zealand. Um, another beauty here, this is, I think, made by, it says the, Te I think, Tema, T-E-M-E, Maru M A R U Craft Group. So this is a community project or a joint project done in 2005 um, in the Cook Islands. So another beauty, but for me this one really sings. The color choice is amazingly um, harmonious for me. And what I really love about it is that border design is that paprika color that I am just in love with but there really is not paprika in the body of it. They've got that raspberry color, they've got pinks, they've got tomato orange, they've got straight orange, but they do not have paprika. And it is so interesting to me that they bordered this with paprika because 
somehow it pops every single color in this piece. I think this is just outrageously pretty. Let's see. I don't want to move too far forward because I want to show you some other things that have to do with this particular style. Toko Fanuko Karaka uh, is the maker and artist of this, made this sometime between the 1940s and 1960s. Now you see how this is very different. These cross stitch style to Veve are very different than the florals that we were looking at earlier. They are all to Veve, uh, meaning quilt, right? But these are different. This looks almost like uh, a native style, tribal style, even Navajo kind of design, looking at it with American eyes. But you can see there is a repeat design. It is staggered. It again looks like a crop of a sample of material. Very, very well planned color wise. In that break between the main motifs, vertically, they've got all these little pink flowers poking out. It looks very southwestern to me, and I know it's not. It's just this cultural crossover, right, that you, that you get. Uh, people do so much good work, so much good designing. Sooner or later, we're going to see similar motifs from one culture to the next, especially because people travel, right? So interesting, interesting. Now let me see what the next, nope, we're not ready for that yet. That's what I was afraid of. Spoiler alert. So let's look at some of these. I want to show you some of the images I pulled from that book that we were looking at. Now, this is just a beautiful image of a stunning little girl sitting in front of the kind of Teveve we were looking at on Monday and at the beginning of the episode today. So the, this is like a quarter Teveve. She's sitting on one and there's one posed behind her. This is an example of the type of beautiful, like really moving type of photography that you see in this book. Tons of it, endless amounts of photographs of the people with their Teveve. Again, another photograph by John Daly in the book, women working, and you can see the leaves, the flora on one woman's head. Another woman has a flower behind the ear. This is a big part of their life, the leaves, the flowers. This is, this is life. This isn't something that is outside the door manicured in the springtime. This is year round, a big part of their life and their daily costume. And they are working on Teveve here. Um, a beautiful picture again, John Daly from the book, uh, a room, I, I took a picture of a picture, which is never really great as it's a bit out of focus, but you can just see the use of the Tebebe. They are all over the place. They're, the one on the far right and the far left are the kind that we were looking at first, but the one in the middle seems to be one of the ones that looks more like a cross stitch design construction than the applique with the embroidery. So let's see. And there was a beautiful picture. I showed you the metal stencils on Monday, which led to a small conversation about Edward Sands Frost cro crossing over into our rug hooking roots. But these are paper stencils. So this reminded me that you could do both, right? The metal stencils are maybe older or maybe used uh, more often, but these are ones that are maybe unique for one or two um, Teveve made by the same person, right? So if you made your own designs, you would maybe want to put them in cardboard like this or on paper like this so you could reuse them and place them around. It really depends on how you design and what your transferred method is going to be, doesn't it? So putting it together with these ones that have that cross stitch look to them, this is how it's done. They're cutting up what seem like an infinite number of teensy weensy little squares and stringing them so that they're handy, right? You see that caterpillar thing on the right, like a yo, like yo-yos, right? If you ever have done that 1920s yo-yo style of quilting, keeping them on a string on the right, and then you can see what she's doing with her hands. I'm gonna show you more close-up pictures. These are all pictures by John Daly. I have to keep saying that because they're obviously not my pictures. So that's phase one, and you can see she's sewing them, teeny though they be. She's sewing them to each other with a nice big, proper seam allowance on them, right? So they are doing this really well. A lot of Teveve are made on machines, but it seems to me like these ones that are pixelated are made by hand. At least what that's what these pictures are telling me. I suppose it's possible on a machine, but if you are a sewer, you know, this, it, is it even worth it, right? Is it even worth it? I mean, these are like such small stretches of sewing. And here she is putting them together into a larger piece. So this looks familiar at this point for quilters. This looks familiar. It is just tiny. I mean, it's on a very tiny scale. And this is why we are able to get pieces that look, get finished pieces, finished to Veve, that look so highly pixelated is because of these teensy little squares. 
it really is something, isn't it? It really is something. If you have ever done like a postage stamp quilt with your quilting, your leftover scraps, it is, I have done postage stamps, quilts, um, and pillow covers and things. My sister, I think, has all of them because she loved them. But I hand sewed them. I at least hand sewed them into strips and then I machine sewed the strips together because I just found it not worthwhile. I found it easy to sit in front of the TV. You know me, the Dorito bag. Uh, and hand sew just little square to little square, but it was hard and it was time consuming. So I can really appreciate the work that is being done and represented in this photo. It is excruciatingly um, time consuming, but also joyful and um, uh, meditative, right? And a very productive occupation. This is an example of the kind of embroidery that you would find on that first style of Tebebe, right? With the large florals. So when we look at them from a distance because they are bed size or wall size, bigger than bed size, we see flashes of color, but it's sometimes hard to see what the embroidery actually looks like. It looks like this. It's, it's beautiful, very, very um, colorful, color changing threads, exquisite detail. Right? These are just incredible amounts of work. If you're wondering how long does it take to make a Teveve, um, I don't know. And I haven't finished. I'm just flashing through to get to our last photo. I'm just um, not far enough along in the reading of the book to know the answer to that. If anybody else happens to know, um, go ahead and write it on the thread because I'd be curious. And of course, it's going to be different from number one, person to person, uh, how experienced you are, that particular design and how detailed it is. Uh, how much embroidery you plan to do. This one uh, that I'm showing, you know, appears to not have embroidery. I absolutely love this. We are entering the last phase of our conversation, uh, talking about rugs, I'm sorry, talking about Teveve that are too colored, right? More in the vein of a Hawaiian quilt. So not embroidered. This one would, in theory, take less time, but I just don't know. I have not made one. And you can see that there is a lot of fussiness with the cut, right? There's a lot to stitch down. This is like an applique project. This this is not a short project either. Um, and of course, people are doing these also in group settings. So it's, it's a hard one to pin down, isn't it? If you sew, quilt, or make rugs, you know that these are very time-consuming projects. And that's why they are so special to give as gifts. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Batez... Batis, Batis, Bat Batisiba, Mrs. Batisiba, I am sorry. These are hard, these are hard names for me. Mrs. Batisiba Daniels, 2015, did this one. This Teveve was embroidered, so it does have embroidery on it, but it might be same color, by the uh, Venatini Ote Mapu O Hamilton, a young woman's group of Hamilton, so a Hamilton must be a place, who are part of the West Side Pacific Islands Church. Uh, the Teveve was cut in 2003, sewn in 2004, and completed in 2005. Ask and you shall receive. That was the question I just had. So two years to put this one together for a group of people. It was brought to Parirua in 2005 as a gift to help fundraising for the Uapau or Uapua Fellowship and purchased by the Te Papa, the museum. Um, absolutely beautiful. I love these two colors too. Unexpected, isn't it? Unexpected, but so powerful. Let's look at some of these um, two colored ones, and that will be the end for us today. Um, I thought it was worth showing the three varieties. I broke this conversation on Teveve up into these three categories because I thought it's easier to digest um, and, th and think about how they're done, how they're made, how they're designed in case you're looking for beauty or you want to make one yourself. Um, Linda says, so labor intensive and beautifully worth it. It's, it's so true. I worry so much about stuff. And this is like middle of the night crazy. But I worry so much about pieces like this that were made that have taken hundreds, if not thousands of hours. Um, and, how, and, and them just being safe, right? Car boot sale, not so good. Um, that much work, you just, you, you want to just know and you can't know, but you want to know that the, this, these people's work or this person's work uh, will be safe forever, right? It will last forever. And of course, nothing lasts forever, but oh, it's just so much time. You know, it's such it's such a treasure. This one was done by Jasmine Underhill. I think that's my favorite name of all time. Jasmine Underhill in 1987 in New Zealand. That's all it said. You know what's different about this one? If you're wondering, it is the quarter fold, right? Half, half and then half again into a quarter of your paper to design this. 
but she is leaving she's she's probably folding again into eighths and she's leaving that center seam blank but she is connecting the design on the sides if you get what i mean so normally we would have in the four corners top left top right bottom left bottom right four mirror images but because she's working on the diagonal and leaving that pi eighth of the composition fold blank she gets it broken in in a different way we get we get four triangles instead of four squares this is a cool way to design too and somehow that center keeps talking to me it looks like a keyhole where to where are we go in the secret garden it's so cool very simple scalloped border on a piece that is otherwise very very detailed absolutely exquisite Cindy says, this yellow and black is so hard to decide. Is the black the background or the yellow? Let's look again together, and let's see if we can come up with a thought on that. You know, I think that the black is the background, just judging from the photos of the making, and that the yellow is cut um, and sewn on top, applique style. So when we talk about, and we occasionally talk about... Um, let me come back to you for a minute. Uh, forms like the South American form, the Mexican MOLA, right? M-O-L-A. When we talk about those kinds of forms, and there are other varieties of that, maybe this is another conversation for us to have. Sometimes you get forms where you lay the top cloth on top and you cut away. Um, but this doesn't seem to me to be one of those forms. It might be that some women do work that way, but this looks to me from the photographs to be um, an applique form rather than a cut away form so it's it could go either way and it could be accomplished either way um, both way there's more than one way to I hate to say skin a cat we got to think of a better expression than that but it is one of those but in this case I think that the black is the background and I could be wrong it will not be the first time I've I'm known for being wrong but um, I think so oh no okay wait a minute I thought we were lost we're good we just have to get back to where we were. Give me just a second. Here we go. Oh, cursor's playing me. Damn thing. All right. So we were just leaving the story of this one. This one is just, wow. You know, I think one of the things with some of them, um, like the black and yellow one, very unexpected colors, right? And to me, that seems extra exotic. But when we see ones that are blue and white, or like the last one, cranberry and white, or a cranberry and yeah, I think it was cranberry and white, cranberry and black. Let me just check. I'm second guessing. Cranberry and white. Um, they, it's more traditional colors for me. So they're within my wheelhouse. Like that's very familiar. Um, and I still love them. But I tend to lean toward the more colorful ones for my own taste. And when I decide to buckle down and do a couple of these, um, just because they're so exotic. But this is also just more understated, just the two colors, um, simpler, but still a lot of work. They're still very, very beautiful. So think about colors like this. If you are a more traditional person and you really enjoy working in traditional colors with traditional techniques, it might be nice to think about doing a Teveve design that is a two-color design in traditional colors because th then you've got a real crossover. You are, not, you are not really in Valley High or the Cook Islands. You are squarely in your comfort zone. So that could be kind of the segue to getting you to doing a design like this that is very exotic looking, but in colors that you are more comfortable with. And this one said, a quilt designer's inspiration can come from her own environment or ideas, another woman or even another country. In making this to Veve, this is another one by Jasmine Underhill. She was heavily influenced by Hawaiian quilts known as Kapa, K-A-P-A. How can we tell? One clue is the blue jade flower, a popular Hawaiian motif. Another is the symmetrical layout around the pico, which is the central hole. Interesting. And the lay border. Okay, so see, these are symbols um, that I wouldn't know, right? Because culturally, I'm, I don't know anything about the Cook Islands, the South Pacific, Hawaii, any of that. But this writer at the museum obviously does know and has picked out all of these different motifs. So that is crystal clear. That Those are three things that point absolutely to being inspired by uh, Hawaiian art and Hawaiian quilts. Interesting. Interesting. This is another beauty. This is so understated. 
this to me just feels like laying in the grass, like on a fall night, looking up through the trees at the night. You know, it's such like dusky evening colors. It's, there's so little contrast, right? That you really work for it. Another four way design. The maker of this one is called Titu Kawenga. Uh, comes from t uh, Tokoro, sorry, Tokoroa uh, in the central Northern Island. Absolutely beautiful. S again, such simple colors. Your eye searches like you search at night in the darkness, searches for details, for twists, for turns, for shapes. Um, it's just so cool. It, it does make you work for it, but I love the color and I love the color of thread. It looks like kind of a gray where the colors are joining. It adds a kind of haziness to it that just keeps me in that, in the moonlight, you know? And again, this is, uh, it's a four-way design, but you see there is a break on the corners, right? So when you're designing, if you do, if you experiment with designing four-way designs to make Teveve, I'm assuming Teveve is plural, right? Just because of the way it sounds, I don't know. Or Teveves, um, you know, you will see immediately when you unfold your paper. And it's best to do this kind of experimenting with tracing paper, isn't it? Otherwise, put your printer paper up on the window to trace through. You'll immediately see what I mean about the way that the joins happen at the folds. You'll immediately get it. All you need if you're doing a four-way design is half of it. And then you can trace the other half through either on your light box with tracing paper or through the window if you're getting good light today. Cindy says, yes, I agree. Two ways are preferred techniques over the many possibilities. So nice to know what all the possibilities are, isn't it? It's so nice to talk it out because sometimes we forget. We forget. Another one that classic colors reversed of the other one that was cranberry on white. This is white on cranberry. Parirua Cook Islands uh, Women's Community Group made this. So another group project. It looks simple in comparison, but you can see it's not simple. I would be very apprehensive embarking on this kind of a project because it's not simple, but it is so beautiful. And maybe a design like this. I mean, can't you see this? Think about the black and purple one before, like on the floor. This would be a very easy design for on the floor to look at, to live with. These colors very different. Opposite complementary colors. I love this. This is definitely in the book that we were looking at. Maui Tie Mato Iapu um, Sewer. I almost said sewer. I never realized they were the same word. Textile worker made this in the 1990s. So it sounds like she was hired to make this. This Teveve was sent to Veriamu Terua and her husband on the occasion of their 50th wedding anniversary by her cousin Mayu Tiea in Rarotonga, who made the mat. Her family of 11 children, God bless her, all agreed that the items should be given to the museum. Of particular significance is the connection between the donor of the Tieo Matapoyapo, who gave a unique cloak to the New Zealand government in 1872, the year Yellowstone Park was made, and the desire of members of his tribe to renew the connection with the museum. Well, that is nice. That was a mouthful, but that is nice. Yep, absolutely, Cindy, like snowflakes, just like snowflakes, exactly. Um, except in this case, when you do, uh, uh, you know what, I'm going to show you in person. I know you all know, I'm just going to reinforce it before we say goodbye for this episode. Another one, same colors as before, but very, very different, simple, simpler. And you can see it almost has that punched work, like on men's shoes, right, from the early 20th century, punching, right, the circular punching through. Uh, just cut out. Very, very different. I didn't see the punching on any other Teveve. A little bit more complicated here, but very pretty. Again, contrasting designs. They are well aware of how colors work and how the color wheel works. No doubt about it. Cannot be a coincidence. This pattern is called Chrysanthemums by, I got this one, Mary Daniel. See? So a photograph by John Daly, a 1992 photograph was taken. Another true stellar beauty. I'm sorry, I'm sniffling. This is the peacock design. So from our childhoods, I know, Cindy, isn't it nice when childhood stuff and things that we used to do as children with our hands, like scissors and paper cutting snowflakes, isn't it nice when you can translate that and use that as an adult again? Nothing is for nothing, right? It's true. 
Oh, Doreen said, once a travel guide, always a travel guide. <laughs> oh, it is. I know. It's like I hear a year and then I think of something that happened that year. Isn't that sick? So this is one of these Teveve that uh, defy superstitions because this is a peacock design. Or at least it's a bird or chicken design. Uh, no, it's a peacock. It's called Teveve Taturara Peacock and Grapes, patterned by Tara Nagu Tuawa. Um, sorry about this terrible pronunciation. Um, beautiful embroidery. You see all the color changing happening in the detail on the birds and also in the grapes. That is all embroidery. That is not another color of cloth. That is embroidery. So kind of crazy. Lots of work. Um, truly epically beautiful. So I'm going to come back to you here. Um, those are the images that I have. Again, I want to tell you that I was working a lot from this book, right? The Art of Teveve. When the other one comes, I probably won't do Teveve again immediately, but I'm, I'm curious to look at the other book because it's an older book from the 70s or 80s, and I'm curious to see how much color photography is in it. It might help if there's not color photography because it might force my brain to think about color combinations and color planning. <laughs> Thanks, Doreen. So I highly, highly recommend this book on Amazon. Here is the... Let me bring the authors into you here. I know you're not in focus. Just give me... Yeah, there we go. So that that's there. That's readily available. It comes the next day uh, if you have Prime. So coming back to that idea of the snowflakes, right? When we're kids, I'm just going to reinforce this. This will be our last... It's like I'm a teacher signing off, right? Just one more thing. So I'm folding the paper in half. I'm folding it in half again with the... Um, snowflakes, the whole orientation of making a snowflake when you're in school revolve, revolves around this shape, right? Re Just remember from Monday, my Sharpie doesn't work, still doesn't work. The whole device devo revolves around where the fold is, right? If you're making a snowflake, you have to keep something intact here and work outward around it, right? You cut yourself into a circle there. It's different with Teveve because with Teveve, you want, you're, you're not thinking of it as being um, circle centric, right? You're thinking of it as that this whole rectangle or square is going to be a whole design. So it might be that you're thinking of it in terms of do I want some big grapes or calla, I'm not actually drawing calla lilies or orchids or whatever here, do I want a big one? And then if, if I do, then I'm probably gonna wanna put a half a one here and a half one here because the important shifts from being at the center center to being along these two lines, right? So that is a difference. You don't even have to have something in the center because it doesn't work like a snowflake. You transfer that design. You don't need anything in the center to hold it. And if you are if you are rug making, rug hooking a Teveve design as opposed to quilting, you definitely don't need to have anything in the center holding. Your loops go into your backing independently, all on their own. They can stand alone. You don't need any design in the center to hold it. It can be empty. Right. So that's very different than this. We're still doing paper scissors. Right. When you're being mindful of where your folds happen. But with Teveve, you are just creating a design here and you're tracing it to the other sides. And if you want a spine going like across through your piece, then you want something here and here. And if you don't, then you don't want something there and there. Right. So just choices as you go, but very easy design possibilities. And then as with anything, you could then go into your eighths. And when you go into your eighths and you've got a design on this spine, right, it becomes like pie shaped. That's how that woman got the one that went into triangles instead of into squares. So just simple, simple geometry, simple good times and fun with paper, with scissors, right? Um, and you figure out the tricks as you go along. They're all pretty, pretty easy tricks to get to. So I have really immensely enjoyed um, looking at Teveve and as I get time, because now I'm working on another book proposal. So as I get time, it's not going to be all consuming. I swear it's not. But I want to get to some more Teveve because I have a few more ideas for colors and things. Um, if you're in the market and you're not going to design your own, please take a look at the ones I did for ribbon candy hooking. I could really use some orders. I really could. I haven't been putting out a lot lately and now I'm trying to put out some things that I might be, uh, that might be of interest. I need to get this up too. I just noticed it in the screen and forgot about it. I'm going to finish this in a how-to video this afternoon. There's a little bit of it is still not done in the corner. So I'm going to finish that as a how-to and then I'm going to put this pattern out as a pattern or a kit and I might even put it out as a class. So that'll be a lot of fun. 
I put the link up also for the Green Mountain um, School in November because I'm one of the teachers there. All of the teachers are fantastic, all fantastic projects, but this is the Prati design that I'll be teaching there. So, you know, it's, it is limited numbers per class, and that is the reason I'm not going to make it to Ava this year because as soon as I heard about it, all of the classes I was interested in were uh, sold out. So don't let that happen to you with Green Mountain. If you are anywhere near us, um, I would love to see you. I think my class is on a Thursday. Um, so I'll definitely be up there for the at least the weekend, but I'm super excited about teaching this, and it will be the exact same colors and everything as my example there. All of the teachers are great who are going. It's definitely worth checking out. I will be back with you for Friday, cocktail night and bingo night. So if you're going to play, make sure that you have your cards ready or not. You know I'll, you, you still win. If you win, if you have a winning card, you still win. But if you're actively going to play, make sure that you order your cards. They are on Ribbon Candy Hooking. They are on our Facebook group, Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. They are in the description of this video. Make sure that you are ready to rock when it comes. And I will explain bingo at the beginning of the game. It's just crossing off calls. And there will be a trivia element because it is a pattern theme. I have some Ritomir patterns. I have some uh, primitive patterns. I have some Pearl McGown. I have a lot of what you would think I would have. And we'll have to sometimes guess at intervals whose pattern it is, because you're just seeing the line drawings. Two games in one, right? Oh, Heidi. Yes. Um, do you, oh, Prati, you mean the Prati one, Heidi? Um, if that's what you mean, I will probably be able to offer it as a kit after the class, because um, I don't want to take away from the class while it's still active. So, but you are in Belgium, so I might we might have to have a conversation about that because it's impossible for you to come to the class. Well, not impossible. I would love to see you. Um, by the way, the class that I just put out, the I'll send you an email, Heidi. The class that I just put out, designing like the Great American Quilt. I just want to let you know I made a little bit of a change there because I made the Wednesday class that I offer at the usual time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but I made the Sunday class 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I know that there are people, um, not just Heidi, in other parts of the world and people who are on the West Coast who that time doesn't fall well or fall right. So I thought one of the days, let me stagger the time and, and see if it helps out with work schedules and like. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but that is there too. Yeah, exactly. Bingo night's coming up. So I will see you next time at Bingo. We will have a great uh, Coffee Time week next week, too. Lots of new things happening, lots of things perking. Remember, Bingo on Friday. Uh, Patreon members, I've got another email coming to you. I'll see you before Easter. I almost, got, I almost got nervous there. I'll see you before Easter. I will see you then. Happy tomorrow, Thursday. Um, if you need me, I'm at ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. And otherwise, I will see you Friday night for Bingo, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.